Hi everyone, my name is Destiny, and today we're going to be designing a responsive tooltip that you can add to your design system component to allow it to fit in any words or shape you need. And this can become responsive, so it fits in any style of text you want, little text or more text, regardless. And we're going to start doing that right here now. The first thing you want to do is to get your square shape. Put your square shape and draw up your square object. Now, I want to use this for roughly the size of the tooltip. And the next off, we are going to go and use the polygon tool. Draw the polygon, select the size you want. Um, I think about 24 should be fine. You can go here, adjust it. This is not set in stone, as uh, so you can adjust this anytime you want. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is kind of just flip this over and place it somewhere in the middle. Now, I want to select both items to make sure they are properly aligned to the center, like that and I'm going to create a union. So I've created my union here. And if I go further, I'll just select the rectangle just to round it up a little bit. Let's give it a radius of four. As you can see, those corner radius are now rounded out. But we still have some sharpness here. So let's adjust that. Now select the entire component and give it about a radius of two. Just so I don't want it to be super pointy. So we have those nice shapes there. Next, I'm going to do is I'm going to change my fill color to white. I can just use FFF. And then I'm going to give this a stroke of about one. And I want to put this in the center. So I already have the first segment for my tooltip. I'm going to make this a component. Now, this is a component, and I'm going to call this, you could call this tooltip base. So you have your tooltip base over here. Now you notice that the entire component selected here, there is kind of an overlap. So we just want to align this properly. You're going to hold your command or your control key if you're on Windows and just kind of snap that into place. If you want to see if this is properly snapped into place, you can toggle the outline mode by holding your shift command O. You're going to see the outline mode. And then by holding command, you'll be able to snap this. We want this just right above there. To come back out of the outline mode, just press Shift Command O. Oh uh, no, <laughs> wrong. Shift Command O, and the outline to go back. So we have our two tips. Let's set some constraints with it. And because we want this to be very responsive, we want the pointer to scale and maintain in the middle, regardless of what is happening with it. But we also want it to scale up and down. So. When I select the pointer, I'm going to come here and click on the constraint, and I'm going to put it to scale in the center, and I'm going to set it fixed at the bottom so it just expands properly. Then I'm going to select the base, uh, the, the rectangle, and I'm going to set it to scale left and right. I want it to be able to expand left and right, and also set it top and bottom. So we have addressed the base. Now we need the text content inside the tooltip. So I'm just going to what T, bring out my text, and I'll just call this to, oh, that seems too much. Let's just leave it as tooltip as is. Now I want this to be very responsive, so I'll hit Shift A, put it in an auto layout. And this padding looks pretty much decent, but if you want to increase the padding, Around it, you can come here. I like to put mine at around 16, just so the tooltip is not, the content is not squeezed into our tooltip base. So we have this here, let's just call this tooltip text. We have that here. Now we want to put an instance of this component of the base into the tooltip text. So I'm going to just drag out an instance and paste it right here into the auto layout. As you can see now, it's inside the auto layout. The next thing I'm going to do is to make the position absolute. Let it ignore the auto layout and allow it left and to the top. And I want this behind the text. Uh, you could just easily drag this up from your toolbar here to the top and it's now behind the text. So we have this set and we want to now adjust it to fit the text layer. So I'm just going to select um, select the two tip base over here, hold my command or control, and just line it up to the size of the text. So now I have 
I have this set. Uh, while that is set, I still need to add additional constraints. Don't forget, we're building this to be responsive. So I'm going to add additional constraints. And instead of just left, I want it to go left and right and top to bottom. So I have this set, and now I'm going to create another component out of this by hitting the component button there. And I have this as a component. So just to, just a quick experiment here to see if this works at all. Let's try this is a two tip. You can see it is quite responsive. You can add other words. <laughs> it is quite responsive, very responsive. So that is good. So let's take this a step further. You can stop here if this is just what you want for your component, but two tips have different directions. So you want to create that if you're building this for your design system, you want to create that flexibility in your two tip. So I'm just going to take um, this component now I have over here and I'm going to create a variant for it. So I'm going to click the add property here, but I'm going to select property for a variant. Now I've put this in a variant and I'm going to name the, instead of naming the property, I'm just going to call the name of the variant, just call it direction. Let's just call it direction. So it's direction and instead of default there, we're just going to rename this to top. If you don't know how to rename your instances, or if you don't know how to rename like your variants, by just clicking on it, and Figma has allowed this auto edit, like just click on it, you can change the name of the property of the variant and the properties of that variant. So I have the first stop and I want to create another variant and I want this to be the bottom variant. Let me just expand this up a little so we, we can see properly. Now I want this to be the bottom variant. Now, because of the way we have structured our architecture initially, because of the way we've structured it, you can just manipulate the tooltip base without affecting your tooltip text, right? So I'm just going to select the tooltip base here and press, Shift H, oh no, 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 not Shift H. I'm trying to flip it horizontally, sorry, vertically. Yep, Shift V. I'll just do that again for those of you who didn't see it. So I'm just going to press Shift V to flip it horizontally, uh, vertically rather. And now I can name this my bottom direction, create another instance. I want this to go to the left. Now, uh, 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 an easier way to do this is you can just rotate, you know, just select the base, make sure you're working with the base. Uh, we're just going to hold down to shift so it, uh, it stays in place and rotate it 90 degrees. Once that is done, I'm going to hold down control and adjust the tooltip size to fit into that text boundary, just like that. So now I have, oops, select that. So now I have, I have my left, my left pointer. Just going to change the name here to left. Have that set. Create the last one. Let's expand this a little bit more. So create the last one here, the last variant, and I'm just going to flip it horizontally. You know, make sure you're always selecting the base, just the base. We're not flipping the tooltip text, so it's just the base. I flip it horizontally, and now we already have the four pointers. So to test this out, see if it works, if anyone using your design system to know if this would work on you know, their shit, let's just put out a frame over here and drag an instance of that tooltip. Yeah, so now we have this instance and as you can see the properties over here on your right, if you drop down the properties, you, oh, we forgot to name this. We forgot to name direction four. Let's go back to fix that. So this should be right. Perfect, and that, that should automatically update. Perfect. So now you can, um, whoever is using this tooltip can call an instance of the tooltip, either make it top, bottom, left, or right, and that should be it. Now to further test your design stem component to make sure it's flexible and, and durable enough. So let us make this top, and let's increase the text. Let's say, thanks for, watching thanks for watching and subscribe <laughs> what is happening with my frame good so thanks for watching and and subscribe so we have this here 
One thing you will notice now, and this is a, a part that I've, I've not seen in most of the tutorials right out there. So if your designer, for instance, gets this, your tool tip here, and manually adjusts it to fit whatever design they want to do, you can notice now you're, you're beginning to have a problem. And now your problem is the text is exceeding the boundaries of the tooltip component. Now to fix this, let's just undo all of that. To fix this, you want to ensure that first, the tooltip text property here, you set it to fill container. So I just want to do that for all of them and use this opportunity to also create a property for the tooltip text in it. So I'm going to select one of tooltip, use the multi select matching um, layers icon over here, selected matching layers. I'm going to use this add variable property, click on adding a property and I'll call it, let's call it tooltip text or tooltip content. And the value would be tooltip. No, right, I think the value should be tooltip content. And we name it tooltip. So now we've created this property, as you can see, over here, now you have a property attached to each of those components. And when you come here, you can see that property. If you change this property, change property, and hit enter, it's automatically affect. So now you want to test out the, the entire tooltip, having everything set, having your boundary set, wherever your tooltip is, that component can be called, get that component, you can always you can always update that property hit enter something is wrong here wow we meant to set this to hog thank you let's just update all of that perfect so that, that seems to be fixed now. Grab your component. Oops. Grab your component. Grab like an instance of it. Finally, this should work now. This should work. Thanks for watching. Okay, are you ready? Let's hit enter together. Boom. And there you go. This is how you build a responsive tooltip for your design system. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I have another amazing tutorial coming up. Turn on that notification so you'll be the first to know. Thanks. Bye.